Well, that fixture felt like the start of the season, to be honest. Uh, you know, we've ground out a result uh, much better in the second half, but the first half was just nervousness, really. You could tell that the players were fearing that we wouldn't get Champions League. Uh, other than Martial and Rashford in the first half, everyone else looked a cut below to be honest, like even Pogba, Fernandez, Greenwood, they didn't have a great game. Uh, of course, we had to play Fosu Mensa in uh, left back. That kind of shows that Oli has no faith in Diego Dalot, uh, and I wouldn't be surprised if he, you know, is sold in the summer. To be fair, uh, um, Fosu Mensa hasn't played since 2017, and he's had a loan to Crystal Palace, coincidentally, and Fulham since then. So you know, it, it does show his lack of faith in Dalot. But what this game also highlighted is. Shaw gets criticised a lot. Williams not so much, but he does the same as Shaw. Um, you know, they, they battle for that left-back spot at the same point. But yeah, the overlapping runs that they do are criminally underrated because we, we didn't have anything on the left-hand side of the pitch. And that wasn't Rashford's fault. He had a good game. But Foster Mensah, you could tell he, he hasn't played, you know, uh, top-level football for a while now. He's been in the under-23s. He had an injury, of course, for about a year. So yeah, he, he wasn't bombing forward like Shaw does, like Williams does. Uh, and it really hurt us because it meant that Palace could quite easily just sit in the middle. And that's where a lot of our, our attacks ended up going. Wambasaka uh, was was left isolated a bit on the right as well uh, in the first half. I, I don't know, uh, Palace played the game really well. And of course they were unlucky. Uh, they, they probably should have had a penalty. Um, Lindelof a bit uh, scrappy in his uh, tackle. I thought Lindelof was brilliant in the last game against Southampton, but he, he, was, he wasn't he was great in this game, but we conceded two in that and didn't concede in this one. But yeah, we were lucky to not concede the penalty, of course. The VAR decision, though, I mean, I would be fuming. Honestly, I would be fuming if that was given uh, against us, the goal that IU scored. Of course I would. I'd be pissed off to fuck, but it was offside only just, but it was offside, and, you know, that's what VAR has been brought in to do I'd still be pissed off of course I would because it's a perfectly good goal but he is about a centimeter offside so that one you can't really dispute it's just irritating because it was a nice goal in fairness uh, but the penalty yeah they were a bit unlucky with that but it, it required a little bit of um, quality from us which again even though we were playing poor, you always felt like when we got the ball, we could create something. Like, we still had that counter-attack, which is something we've lacked in recent years. And yeah, it, it worked brilliantly. Uh, interchanges between uh, Fernandez, who played a lovely ball, and uh, Martial passes it in, a nice little one-two. And Rashford's got the composure to fake a shot to the left. Well, not really a fake shot, but it's like a stop ball. And that all the Palace defenders slide, and it's a simple tap in for him into the corner. Uh, so yeah, one nil before half time, literally right before half time. And then in the second half, again, well, Oli clearly lambasted them and told them to be a bit quicker in uh, when they received the ball to actually play it forward a bit quicker, or even play it sideways a bit quicker. Just be quicker, uh, higher tempo. Because uh, in the first half, we took far too many touches and it was far too lethargic. But in the second half, we did improve and uh, we managed to get a wonderful goal, like a truly wonderful goal. This is Manchester United. You know, Matic was brought on for McTominay at halftime. McTominay is a phenomenal centre midfielder. It's just CDM. We really, really struggle. Anyone other than Matic to have an anchor in the side we don't really have that and yeah McTominay you know did struggle in that CDM role so he was brought off Matic was brought on and we looked a lot more solid uh, which is a bit disappointing because disappointing purely because we don't have anyone other than Matic if Matic gets injured we don't have anyone that can play that CDM role we really need to prioritize that alongside right forward uh, well right wing in Sancho um, yeah we, we need a CDM in my opinion more than we need a center back um, that's controversial. I know you know a lot of people are, are saying we need a left-footed centre back, and of course we do. But that CDM rule when Matic isn't there is vital. Anyhow, uh, Matic gets a nice tackle, plays it forward, and yeah, it, it's just brilliant work from Rashford to beat three Crystal Palace defenders. Plays it through to Fernandez, and Fernandez does a lovely pass. Uh, it, it's kind of a disguised ball. He's done that a lot uh, this game, but Palace defended it really well. 
Um, and yeah, it went through to Rashford. It's a nice uh, pass into Martial who makes it 2-0, wraps up the game. And that's, is it 23, 22 goals for the pair? Uh, they've both scored today and they were both level on goals, so I can't remember if it's 22 or 23. Regardless, they're having a phenomenal season, both of them. But yeah, this is why Fernandes is a world-class player. I don't think particularly for at least the first 60 minutes, he was very good. Like, he tried a lot of things and they just didn't come off. Um, you know, that was brilliant defending by uh, Palace. But this is why he's world-class, because... Without Fernandes, we wouldn't have won this game. He was pivotal in both goals. He might not have got a goal or an assist, but he he played the pass that led to the assist and the goal. And yeah, without that, we wouldn't have scored. And ultimately, we probably you know would have been feeling really nervous and ended up conceding and losing this or drawing this, which would have almost been as bad. So yeah, Fernandes is a world-class player. And yeah, he should have scored in the second half. He hit the post. It was a bit unlucky. Another brilliant uh, run from Rashford finds Fernandez and yeah it hits the post so he's a bit unlucky to not score in this game um I still think he played well it's just not one of his 10 out of 10s I think it's a 6 or a 7 out of 10 so yeah ultimately I'm just happy we won Leicester won 2 nil against Sheffield United so what are we now I think we're three goal difference off them uh at the minute so yeah uh, I think they've got Spurs next we've got West Ham so it potentially could go to the last day. You, you never know, and that's when we do play Leicester. So it's still in our hands, even though we're fifth, because we play Leicester. So, whoo! It, it's it's certainly a bit more nerve-wracking than anticipated uh, if we hadn't dropped that stupid two points against Southampton. But anyhow, I do still think we'll come third. Chelsea have a difficult run in as well. So we'll see. We'll see. It's going to be close regardless. Whoever misses out is going to feel hard done by. And let's just hope it's not us.